Okay, so let's look at these last two transformations. Now, in theory, they're not new. We could actually just uh, use the rules that we've already done for those four other transformations, but I've decided just to concentrate on these two and just separate them, just to show you what happens when we have a negative sign. But I am also going to do it in exactly the same way I would do it using those four rules that we've just been looking at. So, for example, let's just look at this function here. Okay, so the original function fx, all we've done is replaced a negative sign in front of the function. Now, if you think about it, if I did have to put a number not to alter negative fx, the number that I'd be thinking of putting is negative 1. Why would I be thinking of putting negative 1? Well, if you multiply by 1, it doesn't affect anything. So that negative 1 fx is exactly the same as negative fx. So thinking about the four transformations that we've done already, the first question I ask myself is, is that number on the outside of the function or on the inside of the function? And quite clearly, that negative 1 is on the outside of that function. So remember, if the number's on the outside of the function, it affects the y coordinates, and it affects the y coordinates in exactly the manner that you would expect it to. In other words, it would take each of those y coordinates and multiply it by negative 1. So if you look at this question here, okay, I have got a point. The point I have got is 0, 4. Okay, so the x coordinate isn't going to be affected at all. It's the y coordinate that's going to be affected. So positive 4 would go to negative 4. So literally, 0, 4 has now moved down here and moved to 0, minus 4. Now, if you think there are loads of other coordinates here, What's it doing to all those y coordinates? It's just making all those y coordinates negative. So, for example, I could take a point here. Okay, that could be a y coordinate of 6. I'm not bothered about what the x coordinate is. The fact that that y coordinate could be 6, we're now going to minus 6. This here, okay, again, would go negative. So, what's happening to the graph? It literally is reflecting in the x axes. So it's a reflection in the x-axis if we have a negative sign in front of the original graph. Just remind yourself, this is the original graph, okay? The original graph was drawn for us already. So this would be representative of y equals negative fx. If we think about it, let me just take this one out of the way now. I suddenly put another number in front of there, negative 2. Now, I know, because that negative sign is in front of that function, okay, I know it's a reflection, okay, of a description in that x-axis. But that negative 2 would also now have an effect because it would multiply each of the y-coordinates by minus 2. So if you think about it, it's the same rule that we've used before. The number's on the outside, it affects the y coordinate exactly the same way. If that number isn't there at all, if there's no number there, it literally is a reflection of that graph in the x-axis. Okay, if a number's there, then don't forget we must multiply each of the y coordinates by that number. So it's flipping the graph, okay, but it's also shifting it, all right, because it's affecting the y coordinates. Let's look at this next one. This time we've got a negative sign inside the function. Okay, so if we were by, by the rules that we've done before, if I put a number there, I'm going to put minus 1 there. So there's no number in front of that x, so I'm going to put minus 1 there. What did we say it would do? It would affect each of the x coordinates in the opposite way. So I'm times in by negative 1, which means I would divide each of the x coordinates by negative 1. So what would it do to all these x coordinates? Well, if you have a look at this diagram here, this is my original graph my original function graph. What would it do to each of those x coordinates? Well, it would take that minus 2 naught, and I'd divide that x coordinate by minus 1. It would take 4 naught, that x coordinate's 4, I would divide that by minus 1. It would take this coordinate 1 minus 3, uh, sorry, 1 3, and I'd divide that 1 by minus 1 to get minus 1. So what's actually happening is each of these x coordinates, negative 2 naught has gone to 2 naught, 4 naught has gone to minus 4 naught, 1 3 has gone to minus 1 3. And what's actually happening is you're reflecting the original graph in the y axis. So see that y axis there? All that's happening is 1 3, it's been reflected now into minus 1 3, 4 naught. It's been reflected to minus 4 naught, minus 2 naught has been reflected to 2 naught. 
and there we have the original graph now being transformed. Okay, so to summarize, four transformations that we need to know about, okay? We've got the translations, in other words, shifting up and down, okay, in the y-axis, what shifts it up and down when we've got an add or takeaway number, not within the bracket, on the outside of the function. If we've got an add and takeaway number inside the function, that's when we're translating along the x-axis. Remember, it goes in the opposite way to what you expect. Then we've got the stretches. We've got the stretch in the x-axis, okay? That's when the number is on the outside of the function. It affects the y-coordinates only, so it stretches the graph like that. And then we've got when we're multiplying by a number within the function, within the bracket, and that's when we're stretching parallel to the x-axis, holding the y-axis still. I hope now, by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to do transformation of graphs. Thank you.